because I I appreciate someone who's willing to go the extra mile to make Simon squirm and get him kind of keep him from saying some of his typical catchphrases and get in that sort of same rhythm because I I think Simon's a good judge a lot of the time but I feel like over time Simon it ends up being a little bit too much of a pattern you got you got to put him on edge agreed and I think the perfect person to put, do that is I would love to see Howard or Stern or Sharon Osbourne back both of them yeah because I think no, would... both of them would be really honest and really challenge Simon especially I was so furious that Simon buzzed a lot of Howard Stern era acts and it would, well, I just don't know if they'd be able to afford both of them because they yeah. are both worthy of very high yeah. salaries. It may uh, break the network. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't really think about that. I mean, it's possible there's a little bit of shade of Simon not really being a huge fan of a lot of the Howard X, but it's it's certainly possible. I mean, I don't know if Howard would even ever want to come back to AGT, but I, I think they could use a couple of personalities on screen that are a little bit bigger, that are a little bit bolder. Yeah, I agree on that. And unfortunately, I kind of wish that Sharon was... NBC did not burn Sharon really badly because Sharon is someone who's like the heart of the show. She would have fit right in. Yeah, it's been a long time since Sharon's been on. And I I, I think I saw her on The Masked Singer UK recently. I only saw like two minutes about it, so I can't really speak to anything <laughs> else. But it's like, she's still doing these sort of shows. Yeah, and like to just to hear, see Sharon Osbourne press the golden buzzer... Like, seriously, she where was she when last year with Prince Poppycock? She would have immediately pressed the golden buzzer for him. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 and I, I like seeing unique acts get the golden buzzer, and there's no disrespect to a bunch of kid singers that always get it. It just feels like we see a lot of the same sort of acts get it. Yeah, no, I agree, and that's one of the reasons why I'd really like to see somebody on the judging panel that is either from the magic world or the danger act world or acrobatics or just something that's different. Maybe David Copperfield? Oh, man, I would die. But what if they disappeared in the middle of the... Uh, for, I'm sorry, I'll How almost, amazing uh... would that be? <laughs> yeah, and then he would appear suddenly and give the next. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. See, you got to... You got to turn the add to the talent on the panel. Variety. Absolutely. I think there needs to be more variety. Okay, so is there anything else? Because we got to talk about this upcoming season. For sure. Yeah, go for it. All righty. So, yeah, the Gabrielle Union controversy is not slowing down. Do you think this will specter this anniversary season? The thing is, I just, I think it will be there in the early going. I, I think it's unavoidable. I think because this is sort of not a standard AGT season, I don't think it's getting it as much this time around. But I think the moment, the moment they hire someone else, I think AGT, they're going to have to be the proactive ones to sort of show that they're making themselves accountable and that they've actually, you know, listened and heard what some of the feedback is. I don't think it's necessarily going to last forever. Yeah, I don't think it's going to last forever. I think there'll be a little bit when they introduce whoever is the new judge. But with the way that the news cycles work these days and how quickly news comes in and news goes out, I just don't know if it's really going to hold over the show for very long. All righty. So here are some ideas I have for new judges. Okay. And like... Uh, do you think we need to have someone come in that could be like the Megan McCain to some to Simon's like Whoopi or Joy Behar? I think it's good to have someone on the panel who's willing to really go toe to toe with a lot of the other people, while also still kind of being respectful towards the talent on stage. Because I, I think the I think the buzzers have been hit too much on Champions, at least in the finale. I just sort of feel like if you're in the finale. Just get the buzzers out of here. I don't need a buzzer in a finale anymore. But Yeah, no, I agree. Buzzers need to not be in the finale. But I do think that they need someone who's willing to, who's just willing to bring something different when it comes to variety. And that's why I like that, you know, and I'm biased because I love David, but that's why I like the David Williams idea because he's not, he's not so much going to like get into a shouting match, but he's at least going to offer some sort of conflict. And AGT is a family show. I don't think it needs to be too extreme, but... I think you need to have just a little bit of tension in there, you know? Yeah, I'd like to see somebody who's just very confident in their opinions and whether they agree or disagree with Simon, that it doesn't turn into more just drama about the people on the panel, because it is still supposed to be about the talent. But 
that it's, yeah, it doesn't get into like a shouting match or anything like that, but someone who is just, this is my opinion and I stand by it and I don't really care what you say, Simon. One act, one name I've been wrapping my name around, there's been a couple of names. One of them that I think, because so, since So If You Can Dance gets so renewed at the last minute, Mary Murphy. Because I want to hear her go, you're going on the Hot Tamela train all the way <laughs> to the live shows and impress that golden buzzer. Oh, I love her. She's so funny. I feel like if Mary was a judge at AGT, when she hit the but when she hit the uh, golden buzzer, she would just like turn to ash and then just like sprinkle all across the auditorium. No, I, I love Mary. I think Mary would be fun. I mean, I think Nigel would actually be kind of interesting in a way. I'm trying to remember all my specific. Like, doesn't like, Nigel I, and Simon have like a t- went toe to toe a couple of times behind the scenes of Idol? Oh yeah, I think that's kind of why it would be fun. No, yeah. I because I yeah because I think. I don't remember if Nigel was specifically the showrunner, but Nigel was definitely producing when Simon was on, and there wouldn't be conflict. I mean, yeah, Simon would probably never allow Nigel, and Mary's probably a safer bet, but she would be enthusiastic, and she'd be fun on the show. I gotta say Paula, because we've been seeing Paula pop up now and then during the finales. Yeah, Paula, if... I think she would be, you know, I know they do the judge cuts and you get a golden buzzer. I think Paula would be a really good, like, one-episode judge cut person. Just to bring her back, have her, you know, have her go toe to toe with Simon a little bit. Yeah, I agree. And then I gotta say, um, but we need like to have some guy figure that's very like L.A. Reid. Like, yeah, he's controversial, but like when he was on X Factor, he went toe to toe with Simon. Yeah, no, he he did, and I think they could. I think they could bring someone in who's really a good sparring partner with him, but Adam also Levine. Support. Adam Levine. What do you think about Adam Levine? No, I'm over Adam Levine. Okay, too much of him on the voice? Yeah, not to mention I just he felt like... His contestants it, are it, the best. He's just... I don't know. I just never felt that his criticisms were really that strong. Like, I don't know. I'm not I'm not into Adam Levine. I feel... Yeah, well, I think the voice coaches in general, they're, they're a lot of, like, welcome to a super happy fun time with the voice coaches. However, there's only one. The guy say Christina Aguilera. She proved to be a really tough with the contestants. Yeah, she was our, she, she was probably better than any of the other coaches were on The Voice. I gotta say, Christina would be really good to take on Simon. I think she could. Yeah, I think she's certainly capable. But do you of think it. she she's... could go like the? But do you think that could lead to the Megan McCain route? Maybe, she doesn't maybe get her way. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, I think it's mostly it's mostly a measure because it really, I think, the only time the judges can get into super like hardcore fighting mode is in the auditions. I think it would bring. I think it would bring a little bit more of that. I think it's just, it's always a hard thing to predict because maybe you put Christine Aguilera and Simon in the same room together and it turns out they actually have the same opinions and then we all just have egg in our faces. <laughs> no, yeah, I've and it's also LB. still a family show, so I don't know how much they want that kind of fighting. Yeah, and I miss kind of, I've been missing Mel B a lot. Mel is fun. I, I, I liked Mel even more than I thought. I would going in like in that era of the show the person that would frustrate me the most was probably Heidi just because Heidi hated comedians so much yeah like, no kidding <laughs> all right we got to talk about the last of that the one of the veterans Howie do you think this season would be his swan song I uh, I think they'll probably bring him back but I mean I would like to see some new fresh faces. I mentioned bringing in uh, someone who's doing a danger act or or magician or someone who's a little more into different types of acts on the show. I just feel like he's he's just not bringing me anything that's getting me engaged or I'm getting really excited about. I just don't think he's as, and I mean, by no means, I'm not, you should take this job away from him, but I also just no. feel like he is... I don't feel like he has the same spirit that he did in the early seasons. Because, you know, I I remember we we talked with Howie a long time ago, back when he was first starting the show. And he talked a lot about how he was just excited to be there because he was used to watching it on his couch. And it just feels like he's a little bit more jaded now. And it feels like I just I don't find myself agreeing with a lot of his takes. And I think that's just part of my own selfish thing where he's willing to put Hans into the next round. And I'm just like, Howie, what are you doing? Yeah, but he also loves Marcelito, so I'm in on that. Everyone should love Marcelito. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. I got to say, there's one thing that I'm not, that's been frustrating a lot of older veteran fans of the show, super fans, the mm-hmm. Kid X. Many of the Kid X have either won or made to the finals since Simon joined the show. 
Several veteran fans were unhappy with this income. Should there be a separate version for the kids? And I spoke with several alums. Both Andrew DeLeon and Brandon James said yes, while Vicky Barbalak said no, leave it be. What do you guys think? I think personally that because AGT is a family show, that having uh, kid acts on the show is important because this is a show that families will watch with their kids and that there will be people that everyone can root for. And also there have been kid acts like Angelina Jordan, who we've seen this season, who... You know, I wouldn't have had a chance to really get to know. And I think also she she is a better than some adult acts. So I think it really has to be based on the talent and not on the age. I think the only thing I would change is just to, and this is more of a judges thing, is to just make the judges more conscientious <laughs> of the fact that these Kids, just because they are kids and they, they're fun, that doesn't necessarily mean that they deserve a golden buzzer. I and would probably... Yeah, go ahead. And here's the thing. I would just say, because if you're going... Like, my my thing is, I would I would not be hesitant to just buzz it. Buzz them. There have been acts I wanted to buzz left and right that are kid acts. Yeah, like, and I understand why people get frustrated. Like, I thought that Tyler was not as good as Brian this season for the two violinists, but Tyler went through. He's younger. He's, you know, he's got, a story. A, he's got a good story. He's cute. And so I understand why that ended up happening. And that stuff does frustrate me because then I see someone like Brian who just lit up the stage and he used all the stage and he was to me, more talented, but I still don't think that kids should have their own show. I just think in the end, HET, it's a show about the public, and sometimes the public's going to get it right, sometimes the public's going to get it wrong, and I think you just, for better or worse, you have to put your faith in the voting public that they're going to decide to do something that's the best for the show, and if, if they don't, then it kind of does keep that unpredictability about the show, because it's sort of like, if the right person won every season, we all wouldn't have anything to really come on and rant about and talk about. Speaking of the right, right and the wrong person winning, Survivor yeah. Winners at War. That episode, like, the premiere episode was outstanding. Yes. I loved it. It was probably one of the, it, fi like, it finally gave me, like I've been watching the chat, checking out the your, your guys' coverage of it and Rob's coverage of it. But I haven't been invested until now with the winners at war. I, I gotta say, this. Who do you guys think has the best shot to win this game? Well, it's still so early, but I mean, I'm all in on you all right now. I yep. think he really played a good game, and he came up with some important strategy last night. His, it was cool that he actually went and watched, like, the poker games and tried to kind of figure out who has relationships outside the game. Whether that actually comes to fruition or actually is anything is one thing. But the fact that he was able to kind of plant a seed that it might be something was really brilliant, and it worked in, in his favor. Yeah, you really impressed me. And I, before the season, I did possibly one of the most insane things anyone can do. I tried to simulate the entire season just doing some predictions. And I, I came up with the final three of Danny, Adam, who I'm a little bit more worried about now after the premiere, and uh, <laughs> Wendell. Wendell was my winner pick. I'm, I'm sticking with Wendell. I think he's seemingly in a pretty good spot. He's youthful around camp. And I think he's just going to go under the radar for a little while, but then he's really capable of winning a lot of challenges and doing a lot of crazy stuff. But I really, I really, really like this cast, and I think they're all likable and interesting. And I, I just think it's going to be a really great season. All righty. So there have been some winners that have been, some fans are not happy about several fans not being in. And do you think Jeff Probst and the production team did Richard Hatch, Tina Wesson, the Sepia, Mike Holloway, and Jenna Maraska Turdy by not incorporating them, or allegedly in the case of Richard and Tina, taking away their invitation at the last minute. Because in all honesty, I'd rather watch some of them play than either, no offense, Ben, Nick Wilson, Sophie Clark, and Amber Mariano. Well, Ben was a bit of a dumpster fire last night, but it was really entertaining. It was. It was funny with Ben. Now, the the thing is with it is that, I mean, I do, I do really like Sophie. I mean, I'll always champion for Sophie being there, but... 
when it comes to pe people like Richard and people like Tina, I know with Richard there's a lot of extracurricular stuff that's kind of gone on with it. And I think Survivor ultimately just felt like putting him on, everyone would bring back the incident in All-Stars regardless.